Mr. President, honoured guests, Sakarda, it's a particular pleasure and indeed honour for me to welcome you home to County Loud, President Biden. We call it the Wee County, County Loud, but coming from Cork, I have to say, President, that the Wee County packs a punch, as we found out recently uh, in the recent sporting fixture. But it is a county that's rich in tradition, history, uh, a county of legends, and a county, of course, of your forefathers. I know that you have visited here before, but today we are honoured to welcome you as President of the United States of America. And we thank you, President, for your ongoing support of Ireland, and particularly for your profiling of our country at every international forum that you attend. And I know this personally in terms of how you've introduced many an international meeting with a quote from Irish poets, and we appreciate that. Your home county, like other border counties, has in part been shaped by its proximity to the border. And in the darkest days of the Troubles, it was a place of refuge for those fleeing from violence, even though it itself was touched by violence. And that's why the transformation brought about by the Good Friday Agreement is so tangible and real here in this location. Today, thousands of people seamlessly cross the border each day. It is a shared space, a place that links rather than divides. Peace is not an abstraction here. It has become part of the daily weave of people's lives. Few would have thought this possible 25 years ago. The Good Friday Agreement enables us to make the most of people-to-people -people connections across this island, as well as between Ireland and the United Kingdom. Its three strands of relationships reflect the depth and interwoven nature of these uh, engagements. And together, we all have so much potential. And we want to explore that all-island potential to its fullest. And that is why my government launched the Shared Island Initiative, so that, so that we can make the most of these opportunities to cooperate to our collective benefit. Much has been achieved since 1998, but there remains a farther shore to reach. We must ensure that all communities and all traditions fully enjoy the benefits of peace and have the opportunity to live on a truly reconciled island. And as we take forward that work, Mr. President, we know that we do so with the full support of the United States. The engagement of the United States in the peace process gave us the Good Friday Agreement. And unwavering bipartisan commitment a bipartisan commitment that you, above all, personified over the last 25 years, uh, President, including through the creation and sustainability of the International Fund for Ireland, that support continues to open up horizons for us. As we build on the ambitions of the Good Friday Agreement to sustain a dynamic and prosperous peace, the United States will remain a central and fundamental partner. It is a privilege to welcome you here, Mr. President, to celebrate all that has been achieved and to look forward together to the shining possibilities of our future. Welcome home, Mr. President. Well, it feels like home. I said uh, last time I was here, in a sense, I know why my ancestors and many of your relatives left <clears throat> during the famine. And, uh, but, uh, you know, when you're here, you wonder why anyone would ever want to leave. Well, I mean it. So it's good to be back. I want to thank another proud son of Louth, the Prime Minister Martin, the guy behind me here. Now, I met him when he was. Uh, he was the Tisha. And uh, the bad news was we put him up in lovely quarters across from the White House, and he had COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the fact that I'm here with my sister, Valerie, and my youngest son, Hunter Biden, stand up, guys. I'm proud of you. <laughs> and 
I wish our mom, Catherine Eugenia Finnegan Biden, were here today. She'd be so damn proud. You know, uh, she uh, Louth held such a special place in her heart, and it really did. And today, uh, we carry her home in our heart, for real. We think about her all the time. And uh, coming here feels like uh, coming home, and it really does. The way the, every time I've come, the welcome, the people on the streets, they're just so, so gracious to us. And earlier today, I had a chance to visit another special place, Collingford Castle. High in the hill, the castle that uh, was likely one of the last glimpses that the, uh, that the Finnegan family saw when they set sail for America. And uh, they set sail with courage and hope, and they crossed the sea. And, uh, and through generations, the Finnegans brought this island uh, uh, home from Ireland to Scranton, Pennsylvania, where uh, where we uh, were raised, where I was raised, I should say, and my mother lived. And uh, matter of fact, I'm going to be heading to the other end the side of the island to, the, to Mayo because my uh, my mother's my grandmother's maiden name was Blewett, and the Blewetts are from Mayo. And uh, we brought over the the mayor of Scranton because it's a sister city to uh, to Mayo. And uh, but uh, my grandpa Finney would also say. Every time we walked, when I we talk about background and heritage, you go, remember Joey, the best drop of blood in you is Irish. <laughs> well, y'all think I'm kidding? I'm not kidding. A mutiny, no, seriously, for the British Navy, and there's a picture of him sitting in his cabin, looking very captainish with a big British bulldog next to him. And he gave me the book. He said, I don't want to hear any more from you. <laughs> <laughs> but all kidding aside, you know, uh, the fact is that, uh, you know, my dad taught us a lot. And he used to, our dinner table was a place where you accidentally sat down to eat, and, but it was a place where we had discussions. And my dad, our dad worked like hell. And he'd come home from work and then go back. At, we'd have dinner at 6 o'clock. And it was a place, as I said, we had conversation and incidentally ate. And then uh, we, he'd go back to work until 9 o'clock. And uh, But my dad had this enormous, he was a, really a fine man. And he talked about the, his favorite word was that dignity. He said, everyone, everyone's entitled to be treated with dignity, Joey, and respect, no matter what. My father would no more walk by the shoeshine guy in the Hotel DuPont than he would walk by the chairman of the board who walked by it. This, that was my, our dad, and he meant it, everyone. These are the same values I've tried to pass down to my children, my son Hunter, my deceased son Bo, my daughter Ashley, that, uh, that everyone, everyone is, is entitled to be treated with dignity, everybody. And they're the same values I, uh, that we, that, uh, including my granddaughters, uh, I have the great thing about granddaughters is they're crazy about their grandfather. Uh, I've worked on it from the very you think I'm joking. I worked on it from the very beginning. And uh, my number two granddaughter, and when I walked in, my uh, he, she was being born and Hunt was there and I had just had been born. We walked into the recovery room, and I said, "What are we going to name her?" And he said, "Finnegan." And I said, "No, what are we going to name her?" And because he's, I thought like, Catherine Eugenia Finnegan Biden, they're going to name her. He said, no, Finnegan. I said, what are we going to call her? He said, Finnegan, Dad, Finnegan. <laughs> Finnegan works for an international company now. She's a great kid. And, uh, but look, uh, the fact is, I've often said the Irish are the only people in the world, in my view, who actually are nostalgic about the future. Think about it. We're nostalgic about the future. I think we all are, no matter where we live, if we have Irish blood in us. And it's because more than anything, more than anything in my experience, hope is what uh, beats in the heart of all people, and particularly in the heart of the Irish. Hope. Every action is about hope. We can make things better. And hope that built both our nations and has been passed down generation to generation by our families. And it's hope that continues this day. Nearly 45 years ago, as some of you may remember, none of you women are old enough to know, but some of you men may be. 45 years ago, Pope John Paul spoke down the road, uh, quoting St. Patrick. And the Pope said, and I quote, 
I have kept the faith, and it's been the ambition of the Irish down through the centuries to have kept the faith. I think that's who we are. We keep the faith. I'm not, I'm not talking about religion per se. I'm talking about keeping the faith, the faith in who we are, what we believe, what our values are. And so my message to you today is quite simple. We have to continue to keep the faith. Every time I walk out, this is not a joke, walk out of my Grandpa Finnegan's house up in Scranton, Pennsylvania, he'd yell, Joey, keep the faith. And then I'd, my, either my uncle or my grandmother would yell, no, Joey, spread it, spread it. But all together, we have to keep working toward a future that's of greater dignity and uh, as we face darkness. And there is darkness we have to face. But we must keep marching forward because the world is a greater, uh, it's just, the world has such possibilities. I was with Xi Jinping. I've spent more time with him than any world leader has over the last 10 years. And over, they keep a meticulous count, as the former Taoiseach will know. And uh, over now, uh, 87 hours worth. And I was on the Tibetan Plateau with him. I traveled 17,000 miles with him in China over 10 years. And uh, he asked me, he said, can you define America for me? And I could say the same of Ireland. I said, yes, I can. I said in one word, possibilities. We believe anything's possible. Anything's possible. Anything's possible if we set our mind to it. That's who we are. That's what we believe, in my view. So let me close with this. Around the time Owen Finnegan boarded the brothers bound for the ship, the brothers bound for America, uh, another shoemaker named Joseph Kearney from Moneygall was leaving because my great-great-grandfather was a, was a shoemaker, Owen. And uh, he sailed on the Carolyn Reed and uh, arriving in America just five weeks before my great-great-grandfather. And they were both shoemakers. And it's doubtful they knew each other, and they came, they came, they, they came out of the same port. And, uh, but one thing we do know, they left everything behind, <clears throat> but they had faith. They had faith in an uncertain future. And all their dreams, I'm not sure they could have imagined that 175 years later, both their great-great-grandsons would be President of the United States of America, Barack Obama and Joe Biden. But that's what you breed here, just faith and the possibilities that are out there. You know, uh, we come from, Valerie and I come from not poor means, but modest means. We lived in a split-level home and the development of similar homes, of 75 homes. It was a nice neighborhood. And uh, we had uh, three bedrooms, four kids, and a grandpa living with us. And, uh, but it was, uh, it was home. I, lo I now look back and wonder how mom and dad did that. But, uh, but, but, the, but the point is that, you know, there's just, there's just we, we were taught anything's possible. Anything's possible. And uh, so uh, the fact is that it's, I think possibilities are what we have to be focused on. And that's the power of faith. And that's the promise of hope. And so, uh, as my mother would say, that's the Irish of it. That's the Irish of it. Whenever we say something was unusual, she said, Joey, that's the Irish of it. And it is the Irish of it. I'm so proud to be here, so proud to be in Louth, so proud to be with I don't want to ruin the reputation, but the Carnies are relatives. <laughs> <laughs> we take great faith. And the closing comment I make, you see this tie I have with the shamrock on it? This was given to me by one of these guys right here. <clears throat> was a hell of a rugby player. And they beat the hell of the black and tans. Oh, God. I don't know. <laughs> but, but it was when you were at a, a soldier field, wasn't it? The game? Chicago. Chicago. And uh, after it was all over, uh, uh, he uh, gave my brother, allegedly for me, but if it wasn't, I still took it. I still got the tie. I wore it with great pride. And so thank you all for the homecoming welcome. The bad news for all of you is we'll be back. Uh, there's no way to keep us out. But thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you. <laughs>